it rolling. So I think at the age of 40, I hit the proverbial midlife crisis and I started to feel that depression or the gray coming in. I was a clinically obese smoker who drank too much and I was about five years away from having a heart attack. My transformation had a, uh, it started off with the physical component, which was weight loss, getting more active. But slowly as I aged, I realized that my mental uh, components were being neglected. I was actually starting to feel depressed. I wasn't feeling motivated by work anymore. And it was at that point I needed to undertake something that was more purposeful. I needed to find something that would get me out of bed every day and motivate me to move forward. The 7 and 7 event was a run from Jasper to Canmore, Alberta, through the Canadian Rockies. It took place in the spring of 2022. It uh, was a total distance of just over 300 kilometers, or roughly seven marathons in seven days. We wanted to raise money for the Rainbow Society of Alberta, who grant wishes to chronically ill children. And for me personally, it gave me purpose and uh, helped continue my, my own transformation. Uh, after I took some time out to recover, the depression started to come back. I found myself, I called it a hangover. So I knew I needed to identify a new cause and identify our next journey, which is going to be occurring in 2023. It's going to be cycling across Canada, uh, but not just from one side to the other. We're going to be including the Northwest Territories, Yukon, it's going to be about 12,500 kilometers. I'll be cycling on average between 160 and 180 kilometers a day um, in variable conditions, hitting all the major cities throughout Canada and a lot of um, smaller cities to hopefully build awareness to this amazing cause. You Can Ride Too is an organization that provides kids with disabilities the opportunity to experience joy and independence through movement by removing barriers to riding bikes. They are helping us plan. They've been an absolute treat and you can tell that they are passionate about what they do and that they're passionate about helping, helping these kids. Me and Nicole have been together for a very long time. I think I met Nicole uh, in my early 30s and we, we dated for quite a while and, and we eventually got married and we've been married for a couple of decades now. She's always been the person behind me, pushing me and getting me to the starting line. We need to be able to spread so much awareness and in order to do that, we need sponsors and supporters to help us with things like uh, logistics. We need vehicles, we need places to stay, we need mechanics, we need massage therapists and physiotherapists and we need support cyclists to help lift his spirits across the country when it gets tough and you know it's going to get tough because 13,000 plus kilometers is no joke. There are playbooks for marathons. There are playbooks for Ironman triathlons. There's no playbook for this. On the 40th day, I may encounter something that no one could have thought of. It could happen on the third day or on the, the 80th day. You know, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis will largely be unknown. It's how you prepare and react to those events when they do occur. That's what will keep me going. And it's our goal that by the time we, we reach that finish line, there are thousands of people in this conversation. And what was a whisper between two people is now a roar in a community. And that roar is creating change. Well, to be honest, I'm absolutely scared shitless. Um, I've had moments of severe doubt when I was driving down here to see the distance that I'd be pedaling. And in actual fact, only a, a quarter of the distance I'll be pedaling. I'm terrified of failure, but I'm most terrified of early failure. Like, if I can get 30, 40, 50 days, I can get a lot of awareness out there. I can create a lot of benefit for You Can Ride too. But if I fail early, it's going to be a heartbreaking experience because for me, it'll feel like it wasn't worth it. And uh, that just terrifies me. I can be very happy that I've raised money. I can be very happy that we've helped kids. And I can be very happy that I've inspired a lot of people. But I also want to look back and, and say I've fundamentally changed. I've, I've found a path forward. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, guys.
Well, first of all, thank you for coming out. It's a small group, but I actually kind of like that because I think this journey represents the individual and making an impact on life. So today we're going to start that process. We're going to inspire people. We're going to show people that an ordinary individual is capable of extraordinary things. And we're going to show these people that we can lift ourselves up and start to change our lives. Well, it started off with a bang. Um, I felt really good. I am feeling a little, uh, I'm about uh, 10K from the longest ride I've ever done. Um, so it's starting to hurt. I think we'll start, start taking breaks a little bit um, more often now. We were pretty frugal with the breaks there because of the wind. So yeah, I mean, we got to get to the ferry then we have an hour and a half break. And then I think 30k to finish it off, right, Darcy? Nope. How many? 51. 51. <laughs> so the days, the, there's still a lot more to go. <laughs> so yeah, I'm suffering. <laughs> I'm uh, more aware of the epic endurance part of this. Uh, I think I was a bit naive that I could just kind of, you know, not that I didn't train, I trained hard, but I, I was overconfident a bit. Today was one of the good days weather-wise. Uh, I had support riders and it still, it still hurt and we still have more to go. So that's kind of the negative side of it. The positive side of it is I cycled 170 kilometers. So, so that's kind of where my thoughts are right now. I gained a little confidence, but I'm also, I'm no, I'm no less scared. I can tell you that I'm still very scared of what's to come. Yeah.